Amid India's growing defense diversification and push for self-reliance, Russia has reportedly made landmark offers to retain its position as a core defense partner. In response to India's expanding ties with the US, France and Germany, and major investments in indigenous platforms like the Tejas and AMCA, Moscow proposed joint production of the Su-57 E stealth fighter, possible Tu-160 bomber acquisition, S-500 air defense systems, and upgrades to Kilo-class submarines with caliber missiles. These offers include deep technology transfers and local manufacturing. While promising, India's decision must weigh the benefits against risks like U.S. sanctions under Katsa and Russia's delivery reliability. The proposals reflect Russia's strategic urgency to counter India's evolving procurement strategy amid shifting global dynamics and reinforce their historic military partnership. India has reportedly conducted a successful test of the Extended Trajectory Long-Duration Hypersonic Cruise Missile, or ETLDHCM, a next-generation hypersonic cruise missile developed under DRDO's Project Vishnu, capable of speeds up to Mach 8 and a range of 1,500 kilometers. The missile significantly surpasses the current BrahMos in both reach and velocity. Amid heightened regional tensions, including worsening ties with Pakistan and strategic shifts involving Turkey and Iran, India is intensifying defense modernization. The missile, powered by a scramjet engine, is designed for stealth, precision, and multi-platform launch capability. It can carry nuclear or conventional warheads and sustain extreme temperatures during hypersonic travel. If validated, this test would place India among the select nations with operational hypersonic missile technology bolstering its deterrence posture against both Pakistan and China in the Indo-Pacific region. India's Indigenous Mounted Gun System, MGS, developed by DRDO and Kalyani Strategic Systems Limited, is entering its final optimization phase to reduce its weight below 30 tons, critical for deployment in challenging terrains. Originally weighing 31.5 tons, the 155 mm, 52 caliber artillery system is being refined ahead of full scale user trials. Mounted on an 8x8 high mobility vehicle, the MGS offers a 45 plus km range, high automation, and shoot and scoot capability within 80 to 85 seconds. The system, part of India's field artillery rationalization plan, is expected to complement existing platforms like ATAGS and K9 Vajra. As a Make in India product, it showcases the growing strength of public-private defense collaboration and reflects India's push for self-reliance. The upcoming trials will determine its induction into the Indian Army's modernized artillery force. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, on Sunday, revealed that over a dozen countries have shown interest in the BrahMos missile following its impactful use during Operation Sindor. He stated that a new BrahMos airspace integration and testing facility has been inaugurated in Lucknow, which will now serve as a hub for missile exports and domestic defense self-reliance. Singh emphasized the facility's potential to boost local employment and attract defense industries to Uttar Pradesh. He credited improved law and order and infrastructure for the state's industrial growth. During the event, he also unveiled a statue of former CM Chandra Banu Gupta and praised his contributions to public service, stressing that politics should remain free of animosity despite ideological differences. On July 14, Northern Army Commander Lt. Gen. Pradeek Sharma, accompanied by top commanders Lt. Gen. P.K. Mishra and Major Gen. Kashik Mukherjee, visited Bimbergali Brigade and JNK's punch to assess operational preparedness and threat response. The visit, part of ongoing reviews across Pier Punjal forward areas, focused on boosting troop morale and ensuring dominance amid rising cross-border threats. Bimbergali, once struck by Pakistani artillery during Operation Sindor in May, lies in a region increasingly targeted by terrorist ambushes, 
most notably the April 2023 attack that killed five soldiers. Once militancy-free, Rajuri Punch has become a terror hotspot, with 50 militants currently active, 80% reportedly Pakistan-based. Forested terrain in Poonch, Dota, Kishtwar, and Uthmapur continues to provide cover to infiltrators, prompting enhanced counterinfiltration deployments across the region. Pakistan is once again resorting to its familiar tactics, this time using its temporary presidency of the UN Security Council to push a hidden agenda. As it nears the end of its term, Pakistan plans to host an open debate on the peaceful resolution of global disputes. While the topic appears neutral, India's diplomatic circles see through it. Pakistan is expected to table a resolution under Chapter 6 of the UN Charter, subtly aimed at reintroducing the Kashmir issue without directly naming it, thus avoiding potential vetoes. With the US, France, the UK, and Russia backing India, any explicit mention of Kashmir would fail. India maintains that Jammu and Kashmir is its internal matter, resolvable only through bilateral talks. As always, Pakistan's ploy is likely to be exposed, with India's firm foreign policy countering its falsehoods and propaganda on the global stage. In early July 2025, banned militant group ULFAI alleged that three senior leaders, including Lt. Gen Nayan Assam, were killed in drone strikes on their Myanmar camps, reportedly between 2 and 4 a.m. The group blamed the Indian Army for attacks stretching from Longwa, Nagaland, to Pangsai Pass, Arunachal, claiming 19 dead and 19 injured, and citing the use of Israeli and French drones. Notably, India is not known to operate French UAVs. During a second strike at Nayan Assam's funeral, two more leaders, Brigadier Ganesh Assam and Colonel Pradeep Assam, were allegedly killed. ULFAI vowed retaliation. However, the Indian Army, Assam police and government officials denied any involvement or operational knowledge. Though past covert anti-insurgency actions along the India-Myanmar border exist, this incident remains unverified, with no independent confirmation of ULFAI's claims. India's ambitious upgrade of the Su-30 MKI's electronic warfare suite marks a decisive move to counter evolving regional threats and modernize its frontline fighter fleet. The Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, through its Combat Aircraft Systems Development and Integration Center, CASTIC, is spearheading the development of advanced EW simulators and systems critical to future-proofing the Su-30 MKI under the Rs. 65,000 crore Super Sukhoi program. The indigenous EW suite, featuring radar warning receivers, electronic support and countermeasure systems, and the cutting-edge gallium nitride-based Virupaksh ASA radar, is being tailored to enhance survivability against adversaries like China's J-20 and Pakistan's F-16 Block 70. Castix efforts also include advanced mission computers, simulator-based testing, and integration platforms to ensure precision and performance. Key milestones include simulator development by 2024 to 25, lab integration tests in 2026, and full operational deployment by 2028. The program aims to boost indigenous content to 78%, reduce foreign dependence, and elevate India's capability in electromagnetic warfare. The initiative is not just a technological revamp but a strategic shift positioning India to maintain aerial dominance while laying the groundwork for future assets like AMCA and AI-powered loyal wingman drones. India's fifth-generation fighter program, the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, has entered a decisive stage as the DRDO's Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE, evaluates competing engine proposals from France's Safran and the UK's Rolls-Royce. The aim is to develop a 110 to 130 kN thrust engine for the AMCA MK2 variant, with full transfer of technology and intellectual property rights, 
an essential condition tied to India's defense self-reliance push. Safran has offered a higher thrust derivative of its M88 engine, already in service with India's Rafaelis. The proposal includes potential support to revive the stalled Kaveri engine project. However, concerns remain over the M88's older architecture and Safran's past hesitancy to share core technologies. In contrast, Rolls-Royce has proposed a completely new engine built on sixth-generation technologies, like variable cycle engine systems. Its approach not only supports AMCA, but also envisions future adaptation for larger aircraft, potentially building an expansive aero engine ecosystem in India. The decision, expected by late 2025, carries long-term implications for India's aerospace autonomy. While both bids promise full IPR, Rolls-Royce's clean sheet design may offer India a future-proof engine platform aligned with its broader, Atmanurbar Bharat goals. What do you think? Do comment us below. Amid India's ongoing efforts to modernize its combat aircraft fleet, Russian state media has begun promoting the Sukhoi Su-34 fullback as a compelling option for the Indian Air Force's deep strike requirements. The campaign follows the Russian Aerospace Force's acceptance of a new batch of Su-34s in late 2024, reinforcing Moscow's confidence in the platform's operational relevance. The Su-34, derived from the Su-27 airframe like India's Su-30 MKI, is positioned as a cost-effective solution offering synergy with existing IF infrastructure. This compatibility could streamline logistics, training, and maintenance processes. With a two-person side-by-side cockpit designed for comfort during long missions, the aircraft addresses fatigue concerns during extended operations, especially over India's northern and maritime frontiers. Capable of carrying up to eight tons of mixed weaponry, the Su-34 offers a combat radius of 1,100 kilometers and speeds up to Mach 1.8. Its terrain-following flight and SAD capabilities have been battle-tested in Syria and Ukraine. Russia highlights these features, along with maritime strike proficiency and relatively low acquisition costs, as ideal for India's budget-conscious defense expansion. The offer ties into India's broader strategic needs in the Indian Ocean region and against fortified adversary airspaces. That's all from YTS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.